Hey everybody, Tracking Pat once again in the final segment for the SLX lathe control on doing ID work. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take that previous part that we bored out to 3.4 inches and then we put a groove for thread relief at one inch inside of it to one and a quarter. And now we're going to thread that, okay? So we got 20 threads per inch on the threading tool that we're going to use. We already have a setup in the machine and we're going to start uh, from the very beginning. So again, just a reminder, the tools are already set up. We covered that in segment one. So I'm going to go right into the program mode. I'm going to skip the part name and just hit go to beginning. So in here it's asking me, what do I want to do? I want to do a thread. And in the thread it's asking me where I want to have my X begin, okay? When they're talking about X begin, they're talking about the major diameter, okay? So even though this thread is actually artificial because we made it large enough for the cameras to see what we're doing, with a 3.4 inch bore and a thread pitch of 20 threads per inch, that means that it's gotta be 3.450 as the major, okay? Another thing I want to talk about is under the help key, I have the ability to change this into a custom thread. And in a custom thread, I can adjust my major and my minor diameters. In our case, we don't need that, but I just wanna make sure you know it's there, okay? So our major diameter is gonna be 3.45. We're gonna start at Z0, and it's gonna be 3.45 at the other end. The reason I asked that question twice is because you can do tapered threads. And then my Z end, I went all the way into one inch, but I actually carried the thread relief groove to an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna go minus 1.25 to make sure that my threading tool gets all the way into the relief. The pitch of the thread is simply one divided by 20 threads per inch, which comes out to be in 0.05. If you didn't know that, you could use the calculator, but in this case, we know it in our head. Depth of pass, I'm just gonna do this as five thousandths for each pass. Or if I wanted to, I could actually do it this way too. So if I hit the data back key and use a help key, I could actually change this to number of passes. And now that I think about it, that might make even more sense. So I'm just gonna do it in six passes, let the machine do the calculations for how each, uh, each groove or uh, each pass is going to be deep wise. And I should also point out that when you're using number of passes, it automatically lessens the amount of the pass the deeper the tool gets engaged into the thread. So here it's asking me for number of spring passes. We're just gonna use one that's just a clear cut pass at the end with no tool pressure on it. The plunge angle, it's assuming it's a standard thread, so it's at 29 and a half degrees. I would only change this if I was cutting something like an Acme or a buttress thread, which I'm not. So I'm gonna leave that where it is, hit the set key. It's asking me if I'm cutting inside or outside threads. One is for inside. Number of starts, it'll do multi-lead threads up to thread up to 10 leads in a thread. Okay, we only need one, it's a standard thread. My RPM, I'm just gonna set it at 300 inches. And then I'm gonna use tool number five. And when I push the look button, you're gonna see here's my thread. Again, there's the center of my part. Okay, I'm gonna hit the mode key to get out of program mode. I'm gonna go into setup mode. As always, like I've showed you in the other segments, I'm gonna to check to make sure I've picked the right tool. So you'll see that tool number five is an ID thread and that it's highlighted so it's correct. And so I'm gonna get out of there and I'm gonna show you the tool path, which isn't gonna look much different than that did, right? So it's just gonna wrap it in here, take the multiple passes. When it's done, it's gonna wrap it back. But I do wanna cover something I talked about in the last segment. My home position is very important when I do interior work. So my home position is set at X zero so that I have a direct route into the hole to do the work. If I was using a home position that's outside of there, I would also have to use a position event to get it in here before it goes in to do the work and then back to there before I come out, okay? So we're all set here, it looks really good. I'm gonna hit the mode key and I'm gonna go to run mode. In the run mode, I can start at the beginning or at any other event. In this case, there is only one event, so they're both gonna do the same thing. So I push that and it says, when you're ready, push go. So I'm gonna push go and it's gonna go home, which in this case is really already there, but it's gonna remind me to make sure I put tool number five in there, turn on the spindle and then either hit tracking or hit uh, CNC run. When you use tracking and threading, this is the one place that I can track up to the thread, but the machine has to take over in order to cut the right pitch at the right RPM. So it'll go all the way through the first pass, back away into the hole, and then it'll stop and I can track it again. Okay, so we're going to do that right here. I'm gonna turn on the spindle and I'm gonna to start to track it. So as I sneak up here, you're gonna see that it's gonna take over. And then you see that it backs out and it's ready to keep going. So now I know it's right, so I'm just gonna hit stop, CNC run, and let it finish.
and there you have it. Okay, so our thread is completed. Just so you understand also, if there was a situation where I measured my thread and it was a little too tight, then I would simply do this. I would hit the mode key, I would go to the setup mode and pull up my tool table. And down here I have modifiers for each tool, right? So I'd come down to tool number five, and then I'd move over here to my X modifier and I'd say, hey, you know what, I need it to be a little bit deeper. So let's say I add five thousandths to the size of that it's cutting, like so. And then when I go back to the run mode, although I'm not gonna run it, I want you to see what happens. So I'm gonna go run mode, I'm gonna go to start event number, and it's telling me which number I wanna start at, which is event one. And then it's going to let me actually go ahead and go right into the thread and cut it again. It'll still use six passes, and it'll still use that spring pass at the end, but it's gonna do everything five thousandths in diameter larger. Okay, so this completes the segments for doing all the ID work in the Prototrack SLX lathe. In the future, we'll show you this also in the RX lathe. But for now, this should really get you started in knowing where you're going with all this stuff. I hope it's been beneficial to you. I've enjoyed teaching it to you. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, as always, keep on tracking. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. And if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you wanna see the next video, just check this one out over here. And otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.